What's up, family? Welcome back to UTL TV. And today, listen, right? We want to um tap into this video by the Honorable High Priest Credo Mutua. You get what I'm saying? Uh, if you tap into the spiritual realm, to the call, to the extraterrestrial stuff, then you know about Credo Mutua. Like the only person that I would put on his level is uh, like Dr. Malachi Z. York when it comes to the extraterrestrial spirituality when it comes to you know what i'm saying anything that got to do with the the ancient teach the ancient the ancient teachings you get what i'm saying and today we're gonna be diving into an interview he had i think it was with um it was with david ike you get what i'm saying and this was before the david ike had been possessed by the reptilian you get what i'm saying or whatever but um we're gonna be tapping into a, a interview that he had and he gonna be speaking about this eye this all seeing eye you get what i'm saying and the curse and you know feel me the reptilian spells that come with it what they do and the whole thing that's the whole occult meaning and spiritual aspect behind this all seeing eye that we see everywhere you know what i'm saying so we're gonna be going we we're gonna be we're gonna start like because he started talking about it like towards the end of it you feel me and then we're gonna jump into the next video you know what i'm saying so yeah, man. Uh, make sure y'all hit that like. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe, man. And listen, this to the brother, like he is, is the high priest. You feel what I'm saying? He is to our people what Alistair Crowley is to the other side. You get what I'm saying when it comes to this to this ancient wisdom, man. So uh, y'all make sure y'all hit that like, man. Hit that subscribe, man. And let's tap into the brother, man. Let's um, concentrate on some of the images on the yeah. necklace and the symbols because that leaves no doubt that a lot of knowledge has been around for a very much longer time than, than we are ever told. Yeah, ask them about the symbol on the hand. I'm seeing uh, the eye. Now, the all-seeing eye and the, uh, the symbol of the eye is one the Illuminati use all the time. Uh, and it's one, of course, that was a very big symbol of ancient Egypt, the eye of Ra and what have you. Why is that eye there on that hand? That represents the terrible eye of the Chitauri, the eye which sees everything, the eye which knows everything. And you see, he said, this is the terrible eye of the horrible eye of the Chitauru, the Chitauru, the, the eye that knows and sees everything. You get what I'm saying? He's talking about the draconian, the reptilians. It is said that when a Chitauri dies, he passes his dead eye onto his next of kin. And to the Chitauri, an eye is a very, very powerful symbol. Damn. So he said that when these draconian reptilians or Chitauru, when these people, when they, I said these people, like they, when these uh, species, when they die off, right, they actually pass their eye off to the next of kin you feel me they said the eye is a very important a very very spiritual thing to these people to the um draconian reptilians this is the eye of the chitaut and but there is more to this thing sir. here there is a hole that goes right through the corpse Okay, we can jump right into the next one. So hold on, let's say this is the real Credo Mutua. Um, this says. David Icke lecture taken 10 years ago before CIA distortion. Do not think David Icke was reptilian because he was trying his best to learn of these things when this video was made. He was asking, he was asking a lot. If David Icke is reptilian possessed, then it just happened the last three years. Everything that you are about to see is 100% truth. Now, if you put water in that hole, you end up with a 
a, a simple magnifying microscope and you can see gems through that water. The magnification is amazing. What? The great symbol. He said if you put water in that hole, right, where that all CNI is on that chain, on that on that necklace that he got, right? He said you take a magnifying glass and look in there, you would be able to see the gin. You feel me? The gin of these these beings. Well, it's pointed out again and again um, on the dollar bill, which is on the reverse of the Great Seal of the United States, yeah. put on there by the Illuminati, a president called Franklin Lana Roosevelt, um, is the all seeing eye. Um, and so is it your understanding that the all seeing eye, when it's used by the Illuminati, represents this third eye of the Chesahu? Yes, sir, I do. I really am sure of this. Why? Because in Africa, even ordinary human eyes are regarded as a very powerful devices of magic. If an African shows you respect, he mustn't stare at you, but he must stare at a point beyond one of your shoulder. Now, we call this so Clonipa, which means deny me your eyes. We believe that when emotionally roused, an ordinary human being can inflict great damage on another human being by the unseen fires that emanate from one's eyes. We believe that we, a, a, a Zulu warrior must never allow his dying enemy to look at him. For example, when a Zulu was killing an enemy, he used to cover that enemy's face with his shield to prevent the enemy looking upon him with his eyes and putting a curse upon him. Mm. So he said back in Africa, um, the ancient, the eyes is very spiritual. They say um, a man gives you his res, gives you his respect by looking at you, not staring, but you know, uh, looking at you. And they have a saying called, I'm not sure what, how he said it, but it says, um, basically deny a man his eyes, deny a man your eyes. You know, you're not looking at him, you're not respecting him. You get what I'm saying? Giving him your attention. And he said. Um, the Zulu warriors actually um, covered their enemies' faces when they were dying, so the enemy cannot look at them in their eyes and curse them. You feel me? It's interesting. People um, who experienced uh, the Chittahuli, the reptilians, um, in relationship to the British royal family and others of various rituals, have said that um, at the point of sacrifice, before the point of death in the sacrifice, that these reptilians stare into the eyes of the person dying, which would kind of fit why those those warriors were very concerned about that. Yes, sir. What are they doing then? We have got a ritual. Listen, and this and this lets you know though, right? And this lets you know that the Zulu warriors, they were going up against these Canaanite, these um these humanoid reptilian type people because he said, you heard what David Ike just said. He said that um that that explains why the Zulu warriors didn't want the um the enemies to look them in their eyes because they said the reptilian like to look in your eyes at the point of death, you get me, so they can curse you or so snatch your soul. You get what I'm saying? So that's how that's which covers that's the crazy. main field. A ritual which is called Ukutata Umoy, taking away the soul, where when a king is dying and he is fighting to pass on his knowledge and his courage to his successor, he would demand that the successor should stare heavily into the dying king's eyes. And also, when a creature is being sacrificed in Africa, 
And he also said, like, if y'all can't understand, because I know it's actually kind of thick sometimes, he said that when a king wants to give his knowledge, his wisdom, and his courage to his successor, he demands that his successor, which is the prince or who's up next to sit on the throne, look him in his eyes as he's dying. You give me so he can transfer his basically it's like a form of spiritual transfer, a conscious transfer where you're giving him your knowledge, your courage, your your wisdom and whatnot. Where did that you think? And it's also a form of you can snatch someone's soul or curse them or whatever, you know. It's crazy. Born, I mean, that creature must be stared at by the sacrificer so that its spiritual characteristics are drunk in by the one sacrificing. I I have seen many times on hunting expeditions in Kenya, Tanzania, and other parts of Africa, when a lion is just about to breathe its last, the hunter, one of the hunters, will stare into the lion's eyes until the lion's eyes start glazing in death. It is drinking in the soul. We believe that that mm. the eyes are not just for seeing, that they are for taking as well. Now, on the hand. That's crazy. That's wild. He said in Africa, bro, they used to hunt the lions, hunt them down, and as the lions was dying, bro, they would look into the to the eyes of the lions. You feel me? And take their soul. He said that. Um, the 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 soul the eyes are not only used for seeing but also used for taking as well. You feel me? Depending on how you you feel me, you using them like this shit crazy. And uh, here is what looks like the symbol of the constellation of Orion. Um, what's the significance of that? Remember, I was just speaking on Orion and the Sirius star um, in this um, on the Eastern star video that i'm gonna drop you feel me y'all check that out make sure y'all check that out that eastern star um decoded video they got um the baphomet the serious star the dog star they got that you feel me as they simple you feel me people throughout africa believe that the original human beings either came from orion or the gods for whom read the Chitauli and many other alien nasties actually come from that constellation. Mm. We call it the constellation. He said that star is where the Chitauri, the Draconian, you know what I'm saying? They come from over there, the Orion and all of that shit. Constellation of Umham, the one who travels very, very far away. And we call this constellation also the constellation of Matsyeng, the giant who was sent by God to this earth to create uh, 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 the first human being. Matsyeng was accompanied by a male lion with a very black mane. And he was also accompanied by his dog. And he traveled throughout the world. He first created the first race of human beings. And he was, they were so stupid in appearance that he buried them alive in the cave in a cave. And then he created the next race of human beings, which was clever. And we are the descendants of that. Also on the um, hand is the, what we would call today the Star of David, which of course is not actually a Jewish symbol. It started being used quite relatively recently uh, in that sense. Uh, uh, but it's actually a symbol that's been found all over the ancient world. What's the significance of that being on the hand? I say there are several interpretations. He's talking about that Star of David that... Um that six-pointed star he you see even david guy said that's not the jewish star that's a whole occult symbol that's a spiritual symbol you feel me it's a symbol of duality 
the triangle going up, the triangle going down stands for the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So it's a very powerful magical uh, 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 symbol. We say that there are actually two universes living side by side. A female universe, which is our universe, and a male universe. And to Swanusi, these two triangles, a triangle facing downwards, represents the descending female principle and a triangle going upwards represents the rising male principle. It mm -hmm. is a symbol of the unity of the feminine and the masculine. It is in fact the symbol, a very important symbol of duality. Is this the kind of um, shape of spacecraft, etc., or flying craft that um, the beings from other planets were no. supposed to have flown in, or not? No. This, you see, the, there are various shapes. There are spacecraft which are shaped like boomerangs or bows. Mm -hmm. These are very, very, very big. Then there are spacecraft which are shaped like pipes, like huge pipes roughly pointed at either end. And out of those huge pipes come these little things. Yes. They are carried inside this huge pipe. Yes. Now, <clears throat> you could talk about this, fella. Um, yes. First of all, um, the, the, the penis and all this stuff, that, that relates, uh, I would have thought, to the, the penis of Osiris uh, in Egyptian legend and, and the same recurring theme. Um, would that be uh, along the right lines? We say, say that King Samahong, who is represented here, yeah. the lord of all the Chitauri, call them what you will, had his penis cut off by Prince Muari, an African hero, and he replaced it with a golden one. Originally, we are told, this thing was made of gold. And now each time when we recall the story of the great marriage between human women and Chitauri men, Damn. No, we're gonna have to go. Hold on, we're gonna have to go back. Because basically he was saying that uh david ike was asking him about that elongated phallus that penis that was on that statue he said that statue was like a prince of the shitaru the reptilian uh during a battle or something like that one of the african warriors actually sliced this sliced this wiener off you feel what i'm saying sliced it off and uh he replaced it with like a golden with like a golden long golden joint you feel me on some freak shit you know how they get down and he was basically getting into the inception point of the um the woman and these chitaru these um these different these draconian reptilians mating with man you feel me hold on All right, boom, here we go. Because he break down a whole lot, man. I'm telling you, man, ain't nobody really messing with bro, man. So he wanted like the top, the top of the top. A lot of people mentioned Malachi's York, but Credo Mutua is just as like, he got a lot of the ancient knowledge. And he came in contact with a lot of people like, from being over in Africa. This creature 
symbolic. And sometimes when the necklace is lying on the ground, we we make a bed out of animal skin for these two figures. And then we lay them side by side and cover them with a, a small skin. So um, why um, are the depictions of the gods, um, if they were reptilian, why are they not constantly reptilian? Why are they symbolized in other forms? Because uh, it is a very, very, very forbidden to portray a Chitawudi as it really is. Mm. Only in that large green head do we see a Chitawudi represented more or less as it is. So this was dictated by the Chitawudi from yes. the start. Was it's 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 along. Because you are not allowed to represent the sons of the python as they really are. He said it is forbidden, man, that you uh, reveal the sons of the python for who they really are. You cannot, it's forbidden that they show their true form. You feel me? And you are really in trouble. If you want to talk about the cheetah, you must either play with shadows, you must place an image of a cheetah against a light and project its shadow onto the wall. So, so you've got a fish, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm... He said, if you want to get it, if you want to talk to a Shitaru or a Draconian reptilian, whatever, he said, you got to place a picture of a Shitaru on a wall. You feel me? And 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 place a light behind it and talk and talk to the shadow or something like it. So crazy, this shit crazy. I'm telling you, he be tapped in the necklace as well, and the fish yeah. fish are scaled. Is this anything to do with the? symbolic representation of the Chittahuli in, yes, in, a, in a way that they couldn't do it openly. Yes, sir. They also, there is a particular Chittahuli who is called Wawane by our people. Wawane was Wawane. one of the few good Chittahuli. Because there are also some good people among said there's some good, there's some good Wawane he said the Wawan was good. a brother called Mpa. According to one of the great stories, they erupted a terrible war on the red world where human beings had originally been created. And this war was between men and women. Yes. Sir. And in this world, men and women nearly decimated each other but they were rescued by the earth mother who sent a great nganyamba that is a great dragon to come out of the sky to take them into its stomach and, and to bring them down to not to our earth to a beautiful watery world near the, the star of the red dog in Jebo which the white people call serious. Mm, that's crazy. So he said on another planet, basically, um, it was a war that these people had um, engineered, that these Shitaru were engineered with these other, with this humanoid race, again, with the man and a woman, and they had damn near wiped each other out. And the Shitaru took these, took the remaining um, couple, you know what I'm saying, humanoid, whatever they was, you feel me? This is basically what I was telling you all about. Um, this is the inception point with that. Um, what I was telling you all about, the Proconians, the um, the Aldebarans, you feel me, where they were saying they had... Um, Took the Poconians and went to the Aldebaran star system, and yeah, all of that. That's that's basically what he explained it. And they created a whole different race from these people, the white race, the the melanin recessive race, because they started burnt out. They couldn't get the, you feel me? They couldn't get the proper melanin. 
also these draconian reptilian these shita roots were cut off you feel me so they couldn't even give proper like this shit. it was just yeah but they invented these people um on this planet and that's what that's why these people like um what he said the white people worship the serious star and you know what i'm saying the dog star you feel me because the shitaru took the damn out barons which is proconians really melanin recessive beings they took them over there bioengineered them into that boom took them down man it's a whole different it's a whole come on y'all know the star of anger they human beings were settled but human beings started eating creatures which they found in the sea which they thought were fishes but which were really human beings human beings we are told started eating the cheetah who, who lived in the sea according to one story and the cheetah who fought back against human beings they attacked them with tornadoes they attacked them with the, with the tidal waves and the human race was nearly wiped out and then two brothers and he talking about um the uh he says something like the shitaru have been the 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 human being they basically attacked the um the nomos he said the shitaru that's lived in the water which is basically the nomos like you see he got the dolphin and he got the reptilian because the nomos the fish is you you feel me the reptilian it also comes from all that all works is that all is the same thing you feel me they were all buying bioengineer off of each other the bird the fish the you know what i'm saying the the the, the, the dragonfly it all starts with the dragonfly you feel me Let's go. Mpangu and Wawan took pity upon the human race and they went into the sky and looked for a great egg and they hollowed out this egg emptied its contents out and brought the egg to that world and loaded the surviving human beings and brought them to our world here mm -hmm. we say that woman gave us the power of kingship he brought it out of the sky and if you notice in many parts of africa ancient kings used to wear a wooden helmet with golden horns it was true in west africa and it was true also in southern africa in the great Mulumutapa empire the horns representing the, the chitahuli yes so the power of the chita because to a chitaul, horns are not just for goring other chitaul. And when he's talking about the chita, he's talking about um when he's talking about them in a good way. How he said he's talking about as far as like the Dogon people, how they got their knowledge from these uh from the Nomos. You feel me? From the stars, the Zulu people. You know what I'm saying? All of this. So the shit you got. That's why he said you had the Wawans which were the agreeable um shitarus the the agreeable reptilians they took the um the remaining of the humans the remaining of the, the human beings and brought them down here that's why he showed veneration to the agreeable um shitaru the agreeable reptilians the the nomos beings you feel what i'm saying and the nomos is different from the draconian from the evil ones but you know they be going they be going back and forth and we all are a part of no most we all are reptilian we all have that the same genetics man as oxen go each other no horns are a symbol of status and through its horn and he was saying that whole kingship thing the whole um uh black people being kings and the whole king and queen thing that that comes from extraterrestrial that comes from 
um, the reptilians from the horns because the horns was a symbol of status. The horns was a symbol of royalty um, when it came to these nomos beings. And we know we, we you know, so we get our knowledge from the nomos. We got our we got our ancient knowledge from the nomos, the, the, the ones who claim to know the most, the, the, the agreeable reptilians. You feel me? A Chitauli is able to communicate with human beings far across the, the, the face of the earth. So the horns were like antennae then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said these horns were like antennas. They can communicate with beings all across the galaxy. Yes. They were instruments of projective power. In fact, it is said by storyteller that King Samahongo punishes those Chitauli who show mercy to human beings by pointing at them so that both their horns fall off their heads. And the Chitauri is therefore unable to, to to direct human affairs through his or her horns. It's also mm. interesting that in the descriptions of the Chitahuli um, with the, the horns and the, some... They can basically place messages, place thoughts in your brain. He said they can direct human affairs just through their horns, like... ...down to the tail and stuff. It's very, very close to how uh, Christians and uh, those sort of stories are depicted the devil. Yes, sir. Yeah. And one thing that interests me is this, that depictions of the desert yeah, have like changed over the centuries. But there is a difference now. First, originally, the devil was depicted as a hook, hook-nosed creature like a caricature of a North African moor. That was at the time when the Europeans were fighting the Moors as well as the other Arabs during the crusade. Many depictions of the devil then show the devil as having a hooked nose. And then later, somewhere in the 19th century age, the devil was depicted as an African with a snub nose, thick lips, and very dark skin. But what amazes me is that now, more than ever before, the devil is represented as a child. Mm -hmm. what, what concerns me? is this, that these alien creatures are now about to reveal themselves, and they are... He said, that's, that's crazy, because we, we, and this was back, this was a, a minute ago, this is how you know we've been, we've been on the road, like we've been on our way to this moment that we are in right now, man, in the age of Aquarius, you feel me? He said that it disturbs him that and now he said throughout history they was depicting the devil as all different type of things black man white man uh different type of creatures he said and now they're depicting see the devil is being depicted as uh, a shitaru a, a reptilian a draconian reptilian you feel me he said and that is scary because they are about to that that's that lets him know that they are about to reveal themselves you feel me? We know that the frequency is rising. It was just like um, 70 degrees yesterday in Michigan. I mean, come on, man. It was hot in the middle, in, in February. Come on now. It's about to get, it's about to get scary out here, man. Y'all got to pay attention. But let me, he going to finish up. Making us aware of how they look like. If you look for example, at, at uh, bioscope films, which were made in the 1950s, the 30s, 
and, and so on. Depictions of space aliens of that time are ridiculous, very laughable, but not anymore. Today, we are having feelings that depict the grey aliens exactly as they really are and mm. the cheetah only exactly as they really are. Mm. Right? Facts. 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 Facts, bro. He said, it's crazy. He said, because throughout, at the beginning of the time, you know, when they was first depicting these beings, they was they looked at ridiculous. They were just drawing up some BS. He said, but now, he said, they showing the grays. You feel me? Exactly how they really are. They showing the reptilians. You know what I'm saying? Resembling exactly who they really are. Like, that shit is crazy. Well, hold on. How long have we been doing this? I only want to yeah yeah we're gonna jump off of here bro listen we're gonna jump back because it's a few of these it's a few of these that i want to get into and do some reactions bro if y'all want me to continue to do these let me know hit the like button we're gonna tap into this whole thing bro like he been, he'd have been through the rituals he'd have been through the ceremonies he didn't been in contact with these things down through there when it comes to going through these different initiations like and these extraterrestrials you feel me so man y'all let me know hit the like button too man hit the comment section share the content man y'all love y'all man